Hey there, Lick and Riffers! Welcome back to yet another awesome guitar lesson here on Lick and Riff, in which we're going to dispel the mystery around chromatics. Okay, I want you to understand the logic, the musical logic behind chromatics. Chromatics are adjacent notes. So what makes them so magical? Hey, how come chromatics work so well? Now, the explanation is actually in the harmony. It's actually in the chords. Because chromatics, no matter what kind of a chromatic lick you're doing, okay, even this, you're hearing chords in your head, okay? You're getting a harmony from it. And let's start with the blues turnaround. Okay, you have a chromatic here, a chromatic here, and then a whole step. Okay, so how come this works so well? This is an E. Okay, and the idea here is that you're actually starting from E. You're starting from E7, okay, or E, okay, and you're playing the sixth harmony here, okay, so you're actually playing the E chord, you're just outlining it. Now, if you take the E7 chord and you take it down one fret, okay, and you still have E on the bass, it's E diminished. So what you're playing is this, okay? But if you're not playing the whole chord, just these, these notes, then you get the magic. Now, what happens when you play this? Okay, you played four and four, three and three, now you're playing two and two. It's the dominant chord, it's B7. It's B7 leading you back to E. Okay, it's B7. And then you have E again. Okay, it's just E, or E7. So you actually went from E to E. E, E7, E diminished, B7, and E or E7. Okay? Now, there's another variation to this turnaround, which is this, which is entirely chromatic. Okay, now it's the same thing. It's E7, E diminished, and then it's this. It's, it's B7 flat 9, which is also a terrific way to lead into the root chord. Okay, it's still the dominant. But it's it's chromatic, so you have you have okay, and this also echoes A minor. Okay, it also echoes A minor because if you do A A minor E, you still get the same chromaticism. Okay, so E seven E diminished. And then B flat 9, B7 flat 9, and E again, or E7. Now, this is basically everything that's going on. Now, in the second turnaround that I showed you in A, okay, it's a little bit different. It starts with a different harmony, so it ends with a different harmony. It's, it starts with A6, okay, or A add 13. And then it goes down to, it goes down actually to D half diminished, but over A, okay? But it's still a diminished chord. And then it's just A9. So, okay? 
Mm-hmm. And it's the same with every chromaticism that you can find. Even when you move a chord chromatically, it's still an interesting inversion of something that's going on inside the scale. It's still a diminished sound that you add to the scale. Um, even if you do this, okay? Even if you take this, the ninth chord, okay? Or the, the extended ninth chord with the high fifth here, it's still a ninth chord, and then this doesn't really work as a ninth chord. It works as a diminished chord, okay? In the context of the in the context of the chromaticism, so you're always hearing some sort of diminished note there. Now, when you play a line, when you play, okay, what you're actually hearing is this: you're hearing the the minor move, and then this goes into a major chord. So. So the chromatic lick here okay, gives you this little diminished note here. You're not really hearing it as a diminished note, but the ear is always looking for some kind of musical explanation, and that's the color that you're hearing. Okay? This is diatonic, it's in the scale. And then it's the diminished sound, okay? Or this, and then, okay? It's the major note. Now, the, the same thing is going on in, so, in all sorts of jazz moves. For example, okay? Or, um, you, you can, okay, let's forget about the flat nine for a second. You have this, okay? You can do E minor. I think I did it as a major chord before. I'm sorry. Um, you can do E minor 9. And then A um, flat 13, which is augmented. Okay? Augmented is a raised 5. Diminished is a flatted 5. Um, so you're still hearing... Um, the fifth note of the scale outside its natural place. So just instead of diminished, it's now augmented. And then it's D9. So it's okay. And that's what you're getting. The same goes for the bass notes, the, the, the chromatic bass. It's an approach note, and it all borrows from that diminished, um, that diminished uh, sound. Okay, it's not diminished per se, but what you're hearing is a sort of a skewed scale note, and that usually means the diminished sound. Unless you're playing the flat 13, and then you get an augmented. That's kind of like the exception that proves the rule. So that's the logic behind chromatics. I hope I didn't confuse you too much. I tried taking it step by step. Okay, if you didn't get it, then just watch it again. Um, it was a lot of information. So thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next video, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Bye for now. Enjoy. Have fun.